This is the summary for the macroeconomy lecture 6. In this lecture we cover the content on aggregate demand and aggregate supply, which is one of the key models in the macroeconomy. This model is based on the idea that the theory is applying to the long term that we've seen uh, in, in the previous weeks might not apply to the short term. This needs first to be motivated through uh, business cycles and then understanding why there are these discrepancies between short term and long term and then we will explore the main elements of this model which is uh, the three curves that we are going to study. Aggregate demand, long run aggregate supply and short run aggregate supply. Once we understand how all these cubes work, we will look at the model illustration and example. So we will see one particular case that we've seen in class. We've seen two, and in this summary I'm just going to show what happens when we have a contraction in the aggregate demand. When we analyze uh, business cycles, uh, it's important to understand that the level of activity is not constant. The growth on the level of activity is not constant. So we have the trend growth and we have variations towards this trend growth explaining some periods of expansion, some uh, periods of slowdown that are normally referred to as the business cycle. There is disagreement as to why uh, we have these uh, variations in economic activity, uh, but Eventually, there are some agreement on the shocks of the economy through changes, rigidity in markets, and other explanations uh, focus on, on, on policy that we will explore in the following weeks. Uh, business cycles have some characteristics. They are irregular and largely unpredictable. Uh, the uh, the uh, economic variables, especially all of the economic variables measuring outcome, they are all correlated, so we have a positive correlation between income spending and production uh, with the GDP. And finally, we have this Ockham's law that explains that there is a negative relationship between uh, GDP and unemployment, so in, in periods of time in which we have uh, production over trend, uh, we have full employment. So uh, basically there's no, no or very few unemployment. However, when we are in periods of, um, of recession, then we are producing below trend and there is high unemployment. So oh, that's the, that's the Akun law. Most economists believe in the classical theory of the monetary neutrality, describing that uh, in the long run, there is no correlation between uh, monetary values or monetary value variable changes, for example, in money supply and real variables like GDP or production. However, uh, there is some agreement that monetary neutrality does not apply in the short term because of these business cycles. There are uh, things that explain these uh, fluctuations through the trend. So it's true that in the long run, we expect production be explained by the trend and the main characteristics of the country regarding uh, employment, capital, uh, human capital, natural resources and technology. However, in the short run, we understand there are some fluctuations and these fluctuations uh, come mostly because there is uh, the monetary neutrality does not apply and therefore some monetary variables might be able to influence uh, real, va real variables in the short run. Let's analyze first the aggregate demand. There is a downward slope uh, relationship between prices and the quantity produced, as we can see in the diagram below. When we decrease the price, there is an increase in the uh, quantity uh, demanded. We might not confuse this uh, relation, relation with the microeconomic view of the demand, that this is mostly explained by the substitution effect and the interrelationship between all the different markets of uh, goods and services. However, in here, what we have is um, some other factors explaining this negative uh, negative relationship that we have already listed here. So there is the price and consumption, uh, the wealth effect, the price level and investment, the interest rate effect, and finally the price level and net exports, the exchange rate effect. They work in the following way, and basically we need to have in mind uh, the uh, uh, the model of the open economy to understand how all they work. The first one is quite straightforward. If prices goes down, 
then uh, consume households have more money to spend, so consumption is going to increase. And consumption is an import an important part of the uh, GDP, so there is going to be an increase in the aggregate demand. The second component uh, is the interest rate effect. So if there is any, a decrease in price, uh, individuals, households will decide to uh, obviously spend more in consumption, but they also will save more, for example, buying bonds uh, from companies or from the government. By doing this, they give the uh, they increase the supply of loanable funds, which means there is going to be a decrease of the interest rate. If there is an increase of the interest rate, there is going to be an increase of the investment, which ultimately increase the um, quantity produced, uh, the quantity demanded. Finally, and following on the same idea, if there is a decrease in the interest rate, there is going to be an increase of the net capital outflow that will uh, depreciate the currency and increase in net exports, and by increasing the net exports, there is as well an increase in the quantity uh, demanded in the country. So all three effects uh, go in the same direction, explaining this negative um, relationship between uh, price and aggregate demand. Another important factor is that any change on, on the main elements of the GDP, like net export, government purchases, investment and consumption, will explain a shift of the cure. So, for example, government decides to purchase more, uh, there is going to be a shift to the left of the aggregate demand. Uh, let's move now into the long-run aggregate supply. Uh, aggregate supply is divided into a cure, which is long-run and the, uh, the short-run. The idea of the long-run aggregate supply is that monetary values cannot influence real variables, uh, real values in the long-run, so price level cannot be influencing uh, the long-run aggregate supply. There are various factors that can change this long-run aggregate supply, like net immigration, physical and human capital, and invention of new of new technologies. These factors also will influence the short-run uh, aggregate supply. In the short run, we have a upward sloping uh, aggregate supply, and the main reason for that is that we have a sticky wage, uh, sticky wages, sticky prices. And misperceptions. So, because of these uh, three elements, uh, the theorist economists consider that there is a positive uh, slope in the relationship between the quantity of output and the price level. The, uh, in terms of shifting this curve, the main element that is going to be the sh shift this curve and this is quite important is the change in perceptions. The change in expectations of price. And this is going to be an important element to understand the uh, model. So let's try to analyze uh, the following model, which is an, il an illustration of what happens if we have a contraction of the aggregate demand. So we just draw our equilibrium in which we, in the point A, we have a price P1 and quantity produced Y1. And then we have a contraction of the aggregate demand, for example, because there is uh, less confidence in purchasing or any possible reason. Uh, for a period of time, we move to point B, in which prices are lower, but uh, we have less production, which means more, more unemployment. This is not a position in which the government wants to be. Uh, so a government or a central bank, they might execute a fiscal or monetary policy to try to bring this aggregate demand two back to the uh, aggregate demand uh, one. We will explore these policies next week. However, uh, aggregate supply might react itself uh, over time. Okay, this will take time as expectations need to be changed. Because now prices are lower, there is an expectation that cost, uh, especially production cost, is going to be lower. And then we have a shift of the aggregate supply to the right, getting a new equilibrium in the long run in which, uh, in point C, in which production comes back to the original point Y1, but prices are lower than at the beginning because of the uh, contractionary pressures that the economy has experienced in the uh, previous months or years. So this is the summary of the aggregate demand. I invite you uh, to look at the textbook for more details. Thank you.